Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet we're testing today is Hornady's 80 grain CX projectile. This is their newest monolithic or all copper projectile. And today we've got it loaded up in six millimeter arc to somewhere a little over 2,800 feet per second. In past testing with this projectile, we found that it seems to excel at lower velocities. So we're very excited to see how it's gonna perform in this moderately powerful cartridge. And we hope that you are as well. So let's get started. Ooh, it's kind of misty out, huh? A little bit, man. A little bit. Be a lot mistier in a second here. Hey, send it. That is as good as it gets. Sweet. Man, I love this gun. You know what I love about this shooting area? What's that? The mosquitoes. Oh yeah, man, they're glorious. It really puts the pressure on. Nice shot, dude. Thanks. Getting into our second test here of Hornady's CX Bullet, and off the bat, we've got decidedly better results than last time. To recap, in our previous test, we ran 110 grain CXs through our 308 at a muzzle velocity of almost 3,500 feet per second, and we had a significant amount of fragmenting. Frankly put, the projectiles tore themselves to shreds, which was a little concerning considering it was still going on at further ranges and lower velocities. So we were very curious to see how they were going to work out in different chamberings, and in this test, they did not disappoint. Before we get into our close-ups, I want to mention real quick that estimated impact velocities were provided today using Hornady's own 4DOF ballistics calculator. At the 100, we had just about perfect expansion. The pedals have peeled back evenly on every side, right around halfway down the shank. The 200 has the pedals ending much higher up the bullet, and it's important to point out that with the relatively low BC we get from this bullet, along with some other factors, we are shedding velocity rapidly. 300 is pretty similar to the 200. Expansion ends just above the top relief groove with fairly even peeling on all sides. At 400, we can really see that outward expansion ending much higher up the shank. The pedals aren't as clearly defined as we drop well below 2,000 feet per second. At 500 yards, we have an estimated impact velocity of 1,465 feet per second, which gives us surprisingly decent expansion. Part of the red plastic tip was also contained in the projectile upon impact, which as we'll see when we get into the grass, 
graphs may have contributed to this bullet's weight retention. Looking at the graphs, we start out with just over two times original size at 2,500 feet per second, petering out to 1.75 at 500 yards with 1,500 feet per second. Weight retention is within one grain at all ranges fired, the lowest being 79 grains and the heaviest being 80 at 500, which is where the projectile retained the plastic tip. This gives us average expansion of 1.91 times original size and average weight retention of 99.58%. In our opinion, this is pretty damn good. What makes it good though isn't its standalone results. What makes it good is how it performs relative to its competition. We recently ran the 80 grain Barnes TTSX and its muzzle velocity was 2844, so 13 feet per second faster at the muzzle. What's interesting though is when we look at 500 yard impact velocities, the CX has an estimated 1465 and the TTSX was an estimated 1671. Now there are a couple reasons why this could be. For one, we used Hornady's 4 DOF to calculate impact speeds for the CX and JBM Ballistics to calculate impact speeds for the TTSX. To test whether or not there were differences between the estimating methods, I ran the numbers for the CX through JBM and it spit out an estimated impact velocity of five, at 500 yards of 1491. This is a little different from the 1465 we got with Ford off, but not a considerable amount, so it doesn't completely explain the 200 foot per second difference between the two projectiles. The biggest factor may be these bullets' ballistic coefficients. The 80 grain TTSX and the 80 grain CX have BCs of 0.331 and 0.273 respectively, meaning that the TCSX is going to do a better job of resisting drag and drop. Now these bullets were both tested on separate days with similar but not completely the same ambient conditions, so temperature, pressure, and humidity could control Tribute. I think the main reason, though, is that difference in BC. The CX is going to lose velocity quicker and drop faster. It's also going to require a little bit more of a wind hold than the TTSX. Where this velocity loss also becomes more of an issue is theoretically in terms of expansion. The conventional wisdom with monolithic bullets has always been the key to getting them to work right is speed, speed, speed. But if we examine our results between the two bullets more closely, we notice that the TTSX had average expansion of 1.77 and the CX had average expansion of 1.91 times original size, even with slower impact velocities at all ranges fired. So while the CX may shed velocity quicker, it may not need that horsepower to expand optimally. This makes sense considering that one of Hornady's goals with the CX was to expand the range that hunters could take shots out to with copper bullets. They wanted this round to open up easier at lower velocities so long range hunters could engage game out at distances not generally considered ethical with existent design. Designs. From this one comparison, it seems like they may have accomplished that. To be clear, I'm not saying the TTSX or the CX is a better bullet, but I am saying that one may excel at certain applications over the other, and the only way to get a better picture of what that'll be is through further testing in different chamberings. Of course, to make sure you don't miss that content and more, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. If you got something out of today's content, consider helping us out with a like or a comment. We've got some very cool tests lined up with Hornady these new bullet here in the near future, and we hope to see you then.